Hey, you're listening to the Riverdale Podcast. This is episode number 102. My name is Jonathan. Welcome to lovely Riverdale, USA. This is a weekly Archie Comics fan podcast. We update every Saturday morning, and every week we break things down into four categories. The first category is the book of the week. That's the comic book I read this week. Sometimes it's a new comic book, sometimes it's an old comic book, but it's always an Archie comic book. We move then to the news of the week. That's what happened in the world of Archie in the week since our last podcast. Then on to new releases. That's what came out this past Wednesday. What will be coming up this coming Wednesday from Archie. And this week we're going to wrap up talking about uh, the podcast itself. We're uh, 100 episodes in now. We are uh, inching up on our second or third year. We're about to start our third year of podcasting here at the Riverdale Podcast. So we're going to do a a little check-in, talk about that. Um, I hope everybody had a great Valentine's Day yesterday, um, or at least not a bad Valentine's Day yesterday. So, enough babbling. Let's get on to the book of the week. This week's book of the week is Laugh, number 25. This is uh, an old tattered beat up back issue the uh the 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 pages are separating from the cover uh all of the uh bottom right hand corner uh all of the pages are kind of dog-eared to different degrees so it's hard to turn the pages this is a old 1990 cover dated december 1990 uh issue of laugh and uh I I don't know if if your friends are like this or if if folks you know are like this. When people find out that you are into comic books or into specific comic books, uh, they tend to tell you when they found them. They tend to tell you things about them. Uh, And in some cases, if they are inexpensive enough, they'll just buy them and give them to you. Sometimes it's the burden. Sometimes this is a luxury. Uh, In this case, it is a great thing. This was given to me uh, by a friend of mine who probably picked it up at a, at a Goodwill or at a uh, flea market or something like that. I hope he didn't pay very much money for it owing to the shape it's in. There's a, there's some grease pencil over the UPC code which means maybe it was uh, illegally sold from like a newsstand. I don't know. In any event, uh, it's a, a a nice little time capsule of what is nearly 25 years old now. Uh, head, headed back to 1990 with a uh, laugh number 25. Uh, the cover gives the impression it's going to be a Halloween issue. That would make sense if it were cover dated December. It would probably come out around October. So there's a nice gag on the cover with everybody in costume. The rest of the issue has nothing to do with Halloween. Um, only tangentially in the first story, which is called Reuben Hoot. This is uh, a uh, Robin Hood-style story told with all of the Riverdale folks. Uh, Mr. Weatherby as the, the king, with uh, Reggie as the sheriff of Nottingham, uh, that whole thing. A lot of the stuff that we've seen currently um or in in the last couple of years at Archie Comics um so clearly this is a, an old trope that they're going back to now but this is a fun story written by George Gladier pencils by Stan Goldberg uh inks by Henry Scarpelli lettering by Bill Yoshida colors by Barry Grossman if that isn't an all-star team of folks um I don't I don't know what is but this is a fun enough story. There's an ongoing gag of a Jughead's character having a terrible garlic breath. Um, there's a, a, a pretty great gag where Reggie, as the sheriff of Nottingham, is uh, setting up this, uh, as anyone who knows this, this, this sort of tale of Robin Hood, uh, Sheriff Nottingham sets up 
this archery competition to lure Robin Hood in and uh, and capture him. And the prize is a car. Um, and uh, there's a, a gentleman with a very large mustache talking to Reggie as the sheriff of Nottingham, saying, Noble Sheriff, uh, how can we bestow such a wondrous machine? It's never been invented. Um, when I state it that plainly, it is not funny. But man, in the moment, was it a good gag. Um, so this is the, the first of many stories in this issue. Um, this is something I like about the older Archie books. Is you get a bunch of short stories. Um, and it could be that I like that because we've had so many long-form stories lately in the books. But there is something nice and classic about uh, an issue like this that has a bunch of stories in it. We get a full page uh, rendered, like drawn ad for the Archie fan club in which you can get a pen that writes in three colors. Who didn't want that in 1990? I certainly wanted one in 1990. The second story is is entitled The Retiring Miss Grundy. This is written by Sam Kujava. Um, I've never seen Sam Kujava's name. If anyone knows anything about Sam Kujava, I would love to know more about this person. Uh, pencils by Stan Goldberg. Inks by Henry Scarpelli. I would assume that we uh, have Bill Yoshida lettering and Barry Grossman coloring in this as well, and that goes without saying. This is a cool story where uh, Geraldine Grundy decides that she's going to retire and uh, take time for her various activities. And then she has a little heart-to-heart -heart with Pop Tate and decides to come back to school. Um, there's uh, an interesting scene where she is sort of exploring her various interests, one of which is sculpting, and she sculpts a, a, uh, a just a, a sculpture of Archie's head, which is a little unnerving. I'm waiting for that to pop up in one of these sort of Tumblr, Archie out of context sort of situations. There's also a great panel where Dilton is wearing a t-shirt with Albert Einstein on it, which is fantastic. And this is also, I, I might say, a great era for Stan Goldberg's art. Um, I feel like his uh, 60s, 70s art was very, very close, very on model with the Dan DiCarlo style. And this era in in the early 90s is when he started to just sort of loosen up a little bit his lines are a little loopier his figures are just a little more gestural um it's definitely indicative of what his style would become later which is very loose with almost like you know disconnected line work with sort of floating lines where uh his work here is still very tight um, but there's a, a bit of a like a like a, a loopiness, a bubbliness to it that I really really like. There's also, um, and I don't want to head too far down a nostalgic trip. Um, a lot of what I talk about in this show is modern Archie stuff because I love modern Archie stuff, and uh, I love the past stuff as well. But I like to focus on the new stuff uh, because there's definitely a, a tendency in modern society to be overly nostalgic or overly complimentary of things uh, the way they were. Oh, things were great back then and now they're bad or whatever. We have great Archie comics coming out right now on a monthly basis. Um, but having said that, there is an ad here for subscriptions and the list of 32-page comics reads as follows. Everything's Archie, Jughead, Archie, Betty and Veronica, Pals and Gals, Betty's Diary, Life with Archie, Betty and Me, Laugh, Veronica, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That is a huge list. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 monthly 32-page books. That's fantastic. Um, I would love to see lists like that. I, I don't know if we ever will. Unless things move entirely over to the digital side of things, uh, will we get that many monthly books again. But uh, cool, nonetheless, cool ad there. Uh, and we move on to not quite our final story. Not quite our final story. This is Josie and the Pussycats showing up. And I don't remember, I'm sure I've seen Stan Goldberg draw Josie and the Pussycats, but I, I don't remember having seen them drawn quite like this. 
this uh this is fantastic i really like the 90s uh, style look that's given to uh, alexander cabot the third fantastic this is a script by hal smith penciling by stan goldberg again henry scarpelli bill yoshida barry grossman working on this and this is the story of alexandra and alexander who are apparently going to Riverdale High at this era of Archie Comics, which is cool, um, as well as Josie and Valerie and Melody. Uh, Alexandra is running for class president against Melody. Um, well, now that I realize it, I guess they aren't at Riverdale High because we don't see any of the Riverdale kids. I stand corrected. Okay. <laughs> So they're not at Riverdale High. Just the same. Uh, Alexandra is running against Melody. Um, there's a, a great scene where Melody is answering questions. There's a debate at the school on the stage in front of everyone. And uh, her answers make everyone laugh. Uh, when in actuality she's being really sincere. Um, but uh, Alexandra does end up winning on a technicality. But there is a great altercation at the end in which Josie and Valerie uh, stand up to Alexandra and tell her that they will be watching her and that she will not be winning the school election next year. And uh, to wrap things up, we get a story uh, of Sabrina the Teenage Witch, written by George Gladier, of course. Uh, uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch's co-creator, along with Dan DiCarlo, um, pencils again by Stan Goldberg, inking by Rod Allerenshaw. And this is a story about Sabrina using her magic in day to day stuff, writing a, a book report, going to the grocery store, things like that. And all of the uh, terrible things that go awry as a result of her doing that. We also get in this issue uh, Archie Club Archie's Club News, and I love these things. They ran these for decades. It seems like these are uh, kids from around the country, uh, presumably around the world, writing reports, writing brief little essays about things they're interested in. There's a report here about Harry Houdini, and also one about tornadoes, and. Uh, Kids would write these, send them in, and uh, the best ones would win a cash prize, which is pretty rad. Um, so, so, so here we are. Um, what are, what thoughts are we left with here? Uh, we get a final uh, interior page ad, which is a full page uh, adventure of of uh, of the Riverdale kids, Betty and Archie and Jughead, which is an ad for Capri Sun. Uh, fruit drinks, fruit juice might be a strong way to call it. But uh, yeah, they're swimming and hanging out with a marlin. Pretty ridiculous. Um, so what's the what's the takeaway here? What's the exciting thing about Laugh number 25? Uh, I, I don't know if it's a remarkable comic. I know I had, a, I had a nice time reading it. I know that it was made in an era in which I first started reading Archie Comics. So it's a nice little time capsule, a nice little trip back to that time. And it's great to see a battered comic book uh, like the one I'm holding in my hand. The back cover is messed up. As I said, the, the pages are separating from the cover. It's great to see a comic that was uh, loved and read over and over again by a kid. And uh, ultimately, that's that's what you want from an Archie comic. So that is our book of the week, Laugh number 25. All right, in Archie news this week, over at firstcomicsnews.com, a site that the podcast is affiliated with, in uh, full disclosure, they posted a press release that came out uh, entitled Stan Lee's Mighty 7 Attracts New Consumer Products Partners. Now, to me, this it implies not necessarily the success of the, the Mighty 7 property, but it does imply that folks are excited about it. Folks think that it have legs, has legs. This is folks 
investing time and, and money into this project uh, with the idea that they'll you know reap some sort of financial return so it's if any if nothing else is a vote of faith uh, by big business in the property of Stanley's mighty seven um, as we talked about uh, last week or the week before the first of three full-length animated features uh, premiered on the Hub Network. And uh, I guess we're supposed to get the next two by the end of the year. And uh, in this particular press release, it mentions uh, an ongoing animated series launching next year. So I guess we'll wait and see about that. That's the first that I had seen about it. But uh, this press release announces a few things of interest. One is that the movies will be coming to DVD. This is an exclusive deal they signed with Walmart and Sam's Club. They'll be getting sort of an initial exclusive for that, and that'll roll out to other stores and chains and be available more widely uh, after after that, I guess. But there are also uh, consumer products. Um, there's a video game developer that's signed on. There's uh, you know folks who are going to make plates and cups and things like that. So this is super interesting, and this could mean... It could mean nothing. I mean, certainly there are lots of plates and cups with uh, characters that no one remembers on them. Um, but I thought this was notable and interesting. Um, you know, when this series launched at Archie a, a few years ago and ran for three issues, I I personally had no idea that it was going to uh, be launched into animation and, uh, you know, have what now looks like is they're going to have licensed products and, and video games and stuff like that. It's been really interesting watching this whole thing unfold. Uh, now for something even more trivial, but in my mind, twice as exciting, maybe. Uh, over at Archie.com, in the Archie store, this they have launched uh, g- cardboard standees. It's like, uh, you know, pr- printed, like, 72-inch uh, tall cardboard standees of all your favorite citizens of Riverdale. These are amazing. Um, they are not without their drawbacks. Uh, the The price point is pretty high. They're up around $60 or so. But if you want a like life-size standee of Archie, Betty, Veronica, Pop Tate, they've got a Pop Tate one. Uh, Cheryl Blossom, I think, is in there. Kevin Keller. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I haven't seen cardboard standees in years. I don't know whether they're expensive to produce. Clearly, they're expensive to produce if they've got a, a, a $58 uh, a price point on there. Uh, but just the same, uh, I was overjoyed to find those, uh, so much so that I, uh, I I had to tell you guys here now. Um, and that's uh, that's it for news this week. Uh, Mighty 7 is uh, going through a licensing frenzy. And uh, cardboard standees are at the Archie store at archie.com. Head over to riverdalepodcast.com. In the post for this episode, you'll get links to both of those stories. All right, new releases, new releases for this past Wednesday, February the 12th. We got uh, Archie Funhouse Double Digest number two for $3.99. Sonic the Hedgehog number two fifty seven for two ninety nine, and the amazing Archie one thousand page comics Palooza for fourteen ninety nine. That is a one thousand page trade paperback for four ninety nine. That is absurd. Coming up next week, super light week next week, uh, February the nineteenth. We're going to get uh, Afterlife with Archie number three. This is the second printing. This is the third consecutive issue to go into a second printing. So that's cool. Big news. If you missed out on that the first time around, that'll be in shops next week with a new cover from Francesco Francavilla. So that's awesome. And this week's digital exclusive over at digital.archiecomics.com on the Archie Comics app over at Comixology, wherever you get your digital comics. Jughead in love. Awesome. This is a 150 page digital exclusive for $4.99. Uh, this is entitled Jughead in Love Question Mark Exclamation Point. This should be a really, really fun collection of stories. 
and at a great price point, 150 pages for $4.99. So those are your new releases for this past Wednesday, the 12th, this coming Wednesday, the 19th, and your digital releases of the week from Archie Comics. All right, finally, today, uh, as you know, we just hit our, our milestone a couple weeks back. We hit that 100th episode. In the coming weeks, we're going to be wrapping up our second year of podcasting, jumping into third year of the Riverdale podcast in early March. So I want to take a moment and uh, solicit your opinions, uh, ask you how you think the show is going, what you like about it, what you don't like about it, uh, what you'd like to see coming up. Um, if there are folks who you would like to hear on the show, um, I'd love to hear who you guys are excited about. Um, if you guys would be excited about uh, more sort of roundtable conversations like we did back for the Sabrina uh, animated premiere. Uh, if there are topics you want to cover, things like that. Uh, I just want to take a moment and and throw that out to you guys. If you guys have suggestions or thoughts i'm totally open to them uh obviously when when i do an interview uh, a lot of it is largely about my own curiosity about the creative process about sort of the creator's inspirations or or how how books or projects came together and stuff so a, a lot of that is about is about me and asking you know my own questions and, and uh, uh satiating my own uh curiosity but uh, like we did with the, the Dan Perrin episode for uh, episode 100, it was great to have uh, you guys, the listeners of the show, uh, come in and, and be part of it. And I'd like to make the show more interactive in that way. So I guess this is an open call, uh, 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 open the floodgates uh, right into uh, Riverdale Podcast at yahoo.com. You can also call in and leave a message at 573-427-2443. And you can always find me on Facebook and Twitter as well. So let me know what you think, and thanks in advance. There are a couple great ways to support the show financially. Uh, Most importantly, uh, listening to the show every week is a great way to support the show. Uh, telling your friends about the podcast is a great way to help out the show. Writing an iTunes review is a great way to help out the show. Uh, a great way to help out the show financially, if you want to take things to that extent, head over to RiverdalePodcast.com. You can click on that button. You can leave a donation of uh, any big or small amount uh, if you're excited about the show, that's a way you can help things uh, keep running over here. You can also head over to RiverdalePodcast.com and click that link for TIFA, Things from Another World. It's a great, big, established, uh, exciting online comic shop. Anything you can get at your local comic shop, you can get at Things from Another World at discounted prices it's a, a great place to do business. So if you head over to RiverdalePodcast.com, click that link for Things from Another World. Uh, a percentage of everything that you purchase there will be sent back to the show to keep us running. So those are some great ways to help out the show. I appreciate it, and uh, thanks for considering them. On the way out, I want to remind everyone to head over to RiverdalePodcast.com. There you're going to see... The great cover for Laugh, number 25. Great Dan DiCarlo cover for Laugh, number 25. You'll also find links to the news stories we discussed earlier in the show. You'll find a link to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. You'll find a link there to send us an email at riverdalepodcast at yahoo.com. As I just mentioned in the last segment, you can uh, you can leave us a voicemail at 573 573- Four two seven two four four three. That is five seven three four Archie. The Riverdale podcast is part of FirstComicsNews.com. Head over to FirstComicsNews.com for uh, up to the minute comics news podcasts. 
reviews, uh, great stuff, cost stuff constantly being updated at firstcomicsnews.com. I think that that's going to do it for this week, guys. Uh, thanks so much for listening. Again, my name is Jonathan, and I'll see you again next week here in lovely Riverdale, USA. <laughs>